Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. I'm generally skeptical about ghosts, and I know many others share my skepticism. However, I've had experiences that made me question my disbelief. Here's a story that particularly stands out, and I'd appreciate your thoughts or any explanations you might have. I have a close family member who claims she can communicate with the deceased. She describes it as having visions of people who have passed away lingering around. The idea of possessing such a gift is unsettling to me. One day, for reasons unknown, my mother asked her if she sensed anything in our house. I hoped she would say no, but her response was affirmative, though she was vague about the details. Two months later, an unusual incident occurred. My father, who wakes up at 5 a.m. for work and usually gets us up for school at 6 a.m., wasn't the one who woke us that morning. Instead, our awakening was abrupt, with the night sky lit by police lights and the sound of loud voices. As I walked down the hallway, I called out for my dad. He responded from the living room, where he was talking to two police officers who were taking notes. Nervously, I asked what was happening. After the officers left, my father recounted a strange tale. He had woken to find every light in the house on, along with the TV in the living room. Initially, he thought I might have gotten up early and turned everything on, but I was still fast asleep in my room. The front door to our house was wide open, yet the gated fence that required a special key to open was still securely locked. It's impossible to open the door from the outside without unlocking the fence first. Most peculiar of all, there was a pot of boiling water on the stove. I didn't know how to use the stove, and both my parents insisted it wasn't them. There were no signs of forced entry, all windows were locked from the inside, and there's only one door. To this day, the mystery remains unsolved, and it continues to unsettle me. When I was younger, my neighbors and I would always roam around the neighborhood causing mischief. We found amusement in ding-dong ditching, rushing to ring doorbells and then hiding to watch adults emerge, annoyed and shouting. But there was this one house at the end of our block that stood out. Its windows were broken, the stairs crooked, the paint chipped, and the backyard was a jungle of overgrown plants and trees. Initially, we'd knock and dash, but eventually we just knocked and waited, curious if anyone would ever answer. No one did. I never saw anyone enter or leave that house. There were never any cars parked outside, yet the house never had a for sale sign. Sometimes, driving by at night, I'd see a light flickering through a cracked window, leading me to wonder if someone lived there, perhaps only returning home under cover of darkness. Our curiosity about the house grew, and we tried peering through the windows. One day, while running around the neighborhood, we ended up back at the house. My friends dared me to knock on the door. I did and waited. Suddenly, the door opened. A man around 60 with worn, dirty clothes and a face marked by scars stood before me. He looked panicked. What? What do you want? He stammered, eyes darting around nervously. Caught off guard, I blurted out, Oh, I'm sorry. Have you seen my cat? He ran off around here. He wouldn't meet my eyes and continued to look around frantically, as if he feared being watched. No, 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 I'm sorry. Just, just go away, he urged, then shut the door. I turned to see that my friends had already retreated down the block, watching from a distance. I ran back to them, recounting what had happened. We returned once more, knocking on the door and then hiding around the corner, but like before, no one answered. After that, we never approached the house again. I'm 17 now and still haven't seen anyone enter or leave that house, nor have I seen that man in the neighborhood again. However, I've noticed that the broken window has been repaired. Back when I was 12, I was fascinated by ghosts and decided to create a homemade Ouija board from an old sketchbook cover, paint markers, and a shot glass. Despite its makeshift appearance, I was hopeful about making contact with the spirits. One evening, when I was home alone, I seized the opportunity to use it, knowing full well my mom would be furious if she caught me. She claimed not to believe in ghosts, but I knew better. I set up a circle of candles in my bedroom, placed the board in the middle, and positioned my fingers on the shot glass. 
I followed all the instructions and asked multiple questions, but to my disappointment, there was no response, not even a hint of movement. Convinced my board was a failure, I didn't bother with the traditional farewell. I extinguished the candles, cleaned up, and went to bed, leaving the bathroom light on since I was still afraid of the dark. This allowed me to see into the bathroom through the mirror's reflection from my bed. A few hours into my sleep, around 1 a.m., my cat's hissing and groaning woke me up. I couldn't see her, but as I scanned the room, I noticed movement in the bathroom mirror. A girl with long, black, curly hair stood there, aggressively brushing her hair. My heart sank, assuming it was my mom who had come home early after a rough night. With trepidation, I got out of bed and tiptoed toward the bathroom. Just as I reached it, the hairbrush clattered to the floor and the shower curtain snapped shut. My cat, suddenly appearing behind me, hissed again, startling me. I was too scared to stay alone, so I ran to my neighbor's house and spent the night there. I never did find out what was behind that curtain. I've kept the Ouija board locked away in my attic, having heard too many horror stories about the consequences of discarding such an item. Even now, at age 20, I can't shake the feeling that someone watches me as I sleep. I've never felt completely alone since that night. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video. 